Hi everybody, my name's Jodie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, as I said, I'm Jodie or Jodie Ann or Jodie's Disney Wishes if you have found me from my Instagram. I do mostly Disney vlogging at the moment, but I'm also hoping to start doing some sort of beauty and lifestyle stuff as well and especially as we've just booked our wedding and we're house hunting so a lot of exciting things are going on at the moment so we're hoping to take you along on this journey with us of buying our first house and planning a wedding and all this excitement because we're probably not going to be back to Disney for a little while as we've got a lot of other things that we're spending our money on but today's video is a bit of a chatty one I am going to be talking to you about what in my opinion are the top five Walt Disney World table service restaurants so everyone will have different opinions on this I'm sure some of these will be restaurants that you love some of them you may not love however when you're booking your dining reservations at 180 days it can be quite daunting there are over over a hundred way over a hundred different restaurants at Disney um, in the parks the hotels and at Disney Springs so it can be quite difficult to decide where to go. So I'm hoping this video will tell you a little bit more about the favourite restaurants that we've been to on our trips and tell you a little bit more about them so you can decide whether they'll be right for you and your family. So I'm going to start at the bottom. So this is number five with one being the best. Hopefully that makes sense. So number five on our list is Sci-Fi Dining. Now this is a table service restaurant at Hollywood Studios. It is one table service credit if you're using the dining plan. And if you're not using the dining plan, I would say that this is a fairly reasonable restaurant with burgers at around $19, um, salads around $16 and steak at around $30. So it's fairly reasonable compared to some of the other table service restaurants around the parks. So Sci-Fi Dining is a retro sort of eight maybe 60s um restaurant which is inspired by a drive through so essentially you sit in cars in rows of two so you'll be two and then two and then two if you're a party of six say and it's quite dark in there because it's meant to be like you're outside at the driving theater so there's a big screen which is showing lots of short clips from different movies old film trailers and there's a few Disney things in there as well it's not scary however if you have got little ones who don't like the dark then this may not be the best place for them and the films and stuff are all quite old school with a lot of older jokes um, so little kids might not get it as much but the whole experience is really cool I was obsessed with Grease as a child I still love that film now and I always loved the idea of going to the drive through I just thought that looked so fun um, and it was a good way to sort of try that out. The waiters and waitresses are all like um, your parking attendants and like your receipt comes um, on a parking ticket and stuff like that. So it's a really well themed restaurant. Um, the reason it's at number five is because even though the theming is fantastic and it's a really immersive restaurant, the food isn't amazing. I would say it's one of the best burgers I've had on site. Um, but... If you want something other than a burger and typical American food, when there's not much else on the menu, it is quite limited. It's mainly burgers, salads and like sandwiches. Uh, they do have a steak, but I've not tried that. But I'm not imagining it's the best steak because it's fairly reasonably priced and it's not a steak restaurant. So I would say if you want a steak, probably go to Hollywood Brown Derby in Hollywood Studios. Um, but yeah, the food isn't great. Um, the desserts, there's not much. There's not many desserts on the menu either, so if you're on the dining plan and you have desserts included, there's not that much, which is great on there. Um, the appetisers do look quite good though, um, not that we've tried any of them, but they do do like sort of um, chicken strips, which look really, really good. Um, the cocktails in there are really great, they do a good selection of milkshakes as well, which are delicious, because they've got like proper ice cream in there, so they're really thick. Um, so if you're having a milkshake and a big meal and dessert, it might be a struggle because as we know, American food portions are huge compared to those in the UK. So I've had the blue cheeseburger, which was delicious, and I've had the chicken salad, which was also amazing. And I'll try and insert pictures of those things now. Now, 
Um, but overall, the restaurant gets on our list for having great theming, um, reasonable prices, and just being a completely different style of restaurant to anywhere else on site. And there's not many places where you can eat and drink and be at the drive-thru anymore. So that's what gets it at number five for me. Next up on our list at number four is the Garden Grill. Garden Grill is a character meal and it is located in the Land Pavilion at Epcot. It's a character meal including Mickey, Pluto, Chip and Dale. So it's a great option to get to meet four of the sort of classic characters. It's located in the Land Pavilion and the restaurant is very cool in that it rotates in a circle very, very slowly whilst you eat and you actually get to see different parts of the ride, the land. Um, and a fun fact also is that a lot of the food which they have in the restaurant is actually grown on site in Epcot so a lot of their vegetables and things like that are grown on site so it's a really sustainable restaurant as well as being really delicious. We have been lucky enough to have breakfast and lunch at this restaurant and I can say both were equally as good. I'll start with breakfast first. A good thing to note about this restaurant also is that it is family style dining which means all the food comes on a huge skillet and it's brought to your table so you don't have to get up like some of the other character meals where they're buffets. However, if you want more of anything else, they bring it to you. It is unlimited, so you haven't got to worry about the food running out. Breakfast, you start with a fruit salad and a sticky cinnamon bun. I think it's Chippendale cinnamon bun, actually, which is delicious. It's huge, it's really moist, it's really full of icing, so it's very delicious. And the fruit salad is really great too, um, and is all really fresh. Once you've had that, um, they bring out a skillet and it has like bacon, sausages, Mickey waffles. Who doesn't love a Mickey waffle? Um, what else is included? Scrambled eggs, breakfast potatoes, and it's delicious. Everything on there is fantastic. And if you run out of anything and you want more, all you have to do is ask and they will bring that for you. For lunch, it's a bit different. It's a bit like um, Thanksgiving sort of style food from what I can imagine. So it's sort of like roast turkey and roast pork with stuffing. It's got macaroni cheese, chips, lots of vegetables, which is great because it's a bit different to the usual sort of buffet food that you get at Disney. And it means that it's not all chicken nuggets and chips and burgers when you're there. It's a bit more of a home cooked style meal. I think there's mashed potatoes as well actually. Um, so it's delicious. Lots of green beans and green veggies. So you can get a quite nutritious meal there. And again, it is unlimited. So you can order whatever you run out of and they'll bring you more of that. Um, my favourite I think is probably breakfast but I would go back for lunch and it's the same meal for lunch and for dinner. I enjoyed breakfast more because I quite like that cinnamon roll, it is delicious and Mickey waffles are always a win for me. So a big thumbs up for the food here at Garden Grill which is what makes it to our um, list. Character wise, the, inter the interaction with the characters is amazing. You'll probably find the characters come round more than once. The last time we went, we had Mickey come round at least four times and he sang me happy birthday because it was my birthday, which was amazing. They brought out a cake and they just really take their time with you in that restaurant. It generally is a bit smaller and a bit quieter than other character meals we've been to, which is why they can spend the time with each of you so much more which is great um, and Chip and Dale are hilarious characters to me anyway they're very cheeky so there's always up to causing a bit of mischief which is always fun um, but yeah they're really cute um, Mickey's in his little farmer outfit because he's um, growing all of the vegetables for our meal and it's just a really really nice environment I've always had great service there I think it's quite reasonable for a character meal. Most character meals are similarly priced. Um, I think lunch is $55 for an adult, which is pretty much the same as all of the uh, character meals. Um, but it is one table service credit if you are on the dining plan. So the reason it makes our top five and is number four on our list is because of the food being really great and a bit different to the usual food you get at 
character meals. The character interaction just being fantastic and the interesting concept of the restaurant rotating. Okay. Number three. Number three for me is Yak and Yeti. Yak and Yeti is located in Disney's Animal Kingdom. It's in between Asia and Africa. I think it's more towards Asia, maybe, I'm not sure. But it's in Animal Kingdom. It's one table service credit if you are on the dining plan. And it's an Asian style menu. So when we went, we had chicken tikka masala, which was delicious. But they also do sort of noodles, rice dishes, um, like ribs and burgers as well if you want something a bit more standard and safe. But their menu is really good and it's nice to have something different if you do like different cuisines um, other than your typical American food while you're in Disney. The restaurant is really cool. It's amazingly decorated. Um, there's different areas, all different rooms, and they're all sort of themed slightly different. But it's a really, really beautiful restaurant. Um, if you sit upstairs, try and get a table by the window because you can people watch then everyone walking below, which I personally really enjoy. The restaurant is open for lunch and for dinner. We went for lunch and as I said, had the chicken tikka masala, which was beautiful. We actually paid out of pocket when we went to this meal because we are Landry's Club members. If you do not know what Landry's Club is, this is a select club that you can join online and pay a fee of $25, which you can then redeem off the bill of your first meal. It basically means that you get priority seating and you earn points every time you dine at a Landry's Club restaurant. There are a few on property, Rainforest Cafe, T-Rex and Yak and Yeti. And there's a few dotted round Orlando as well. So there's Bubba Gump Shrimp, Joe's Crab Shack, um, which is another one of our favourites. But it's off site so it doesn't count in this video. But it's really worth looking into getting a Landry's Club card. Um, I'll try and link the website below. As I say, when you join, you get a $25 uh, welcome reward, which is basically what you pay to get the card. So it then just comes off your bill the first time you go, which is good because it just means you've sort of prepaid for $25 of your meal before you go. And also when it is your birthday month, you get $25 off the bill at a restaurant as well. So because we went in November and my birthday's in November, when we went to Yak and Yeti, we got $25 off a bill, which was great. So it's a really good saving. So it's a good idea to look into this if you haven't already. But as I was saying, Yak and Yeti, the food is really, really good. I can highly recommend my chicken tikka masala and I can very much recommend the mango pie for dessert. It is delicious. I know that AJ from the Disney food blog raves about this all the time and it's worth the raves. It's very good. So make sure you try that if you go as well. There's not as many table service restaurants in Animal Kingdom compared to some of the other parks. So this is definitely my favourite. But Rainforest Cafe is also very good. Next time we go, we are going to try Tusker House because we haven't been there yet. And I hear good things about that character meal. But for us, Yak and Yeti is our favourite restaurant at Animal Kingdom. And it comes in at number three because I really enjoy having some different style of food when in Florida other than just always having chips. <laughs> it's nice to have something different. So yes, number three is Yak and Yeti. Coming in at number two is California Grill. This is a tough one. We're now getting in a tough place because my one and two, I love them both a lot. So it's really hard to choose which is going to be my number one. But number two is California Grill. It's a signature restaurant located in Disney's Contemporary Resort. It is amazing. Because it's a signature restaurant, it's two, two table service credits if you're on the dining plan. And if you're paying out of pocket, it is quite expensive, so like you have to counter in the fact that like you can't, you, you wouldn't be able to maybe afford to eat at these signature restaurants the whole of your trip. I mean, if you can, amazing. I wish I was you, but we can't. We was on the we was on the dining plan, so we used two table service credits, which was great. The menu prices there, um, like entrees range around fifty dollars. Um, and desserts are around 20 They do sushi there as well and wood-fired pizzas uh, for appetizers, which look really good, but we didn't try those. So Let's... the food is delicious. We had the steak. Both of us have the same. Again, we, we, whenever we go anywhere, we always get the same, which is a bit annoying for these reviews, but 
I can at least vouch that both of us loved the steak. It came with mac and cheese, which was, oh my God, so cheesy. I love cheese. So mac and cheese and steak for me is like one of my favorite meals. And this was one of the best I've had ever, like full stop. So if you're a steak fan, if you're a mac and cheese fan, you have to go here. It's really, really good. And if you are a wine enthusiast, then this place is fantastic. They stock so many different types of wines and the servers here are very well educated on wine. They can tell you what they recommend based on what your favourite type of wine is usually. I had the Illumination Sauvignon Blanc and I think Alfie had the Mary Edwards Sauvignon Blanc from memory because we're both fans of a Sav. Um, and they were both delicious. It was one of the best glasses of wine I have had in a long time. I am still thinking about it now. If I could buy this wine on the regular, I would be, and it would be dangerous. So I am very, very pleased I've tried that wine and I can't wait to go back one day to have another amazing meal there because the food was truly delicious. There is a reason it is two credits and it is pricey because the food is just so good. Um, all the things on the menu looked lovely and all the people around us who had different things, I was like, wow, I'm getting food envy. Um, I know Charlotte in Wonderland has been and had the chicken breast there, which looked really good as well. Um, and I'm sure I can try and link her, her uh, vlog below from when she went there. Um, but yeah, I was highly recommended this restaurant. It was somewhere we wanted to go in 2018, but we just could not get a reservation for because it is so popular. And if you want a reservation time around seven o'clock, it's definitely difficult to get because the view from the Contemporaries um, California Grill is incredible. You're on the top floor of the Contemporary, which is right by Disney's Magic Kingdom. And the view is incredible. And if you dine at around 7 to 8, is what I would recommend, between 7 and 8 o'clock, you can see the fireworks either from your table, if you're lucky enough to be in a good seat. If not, you can go out on a private viewing platform, which is exclusive to California dining, um, California grill diners and those who are in the lounge. Wow. The view from there is incredible. They... Um, stream the music in so you can hear the music and you get to see the fireworks you don't obviously get to see the projections on the castle as well but you do get to see the fireworks from a different angle and it is incredible it's so amazing to be able to see the fireworks in a non-crowded environment where you haven't got to wait for like two hours before the show to get a good spot so it's really good for that like in my eyes it's worth the money just to be there for the view let alone the food as well so all in all, California Grill is really, really great. An important point to note, however, is because it is in a signature restaurant, they do have a dress code. So men are asked to wear um, like trousers or smart, sh smart shorts and like collared shirts. So like a polo shirt or like a collared button shirt. And ladies also asked to dress nicely. So when we went, I wore like a dress and Alfie went and had a, um, a shirt on. It was freezing cold the night that we went, so we were very, we were very cold on our journey there. Um, so do wrap up if you're gonna go to Florida in November, that is also a big tip. But it's important to remember if you are booking to go to California Grill or any of the signature restaurants, then it's a good idea to make sure you take a fancier outfit. Like you can't really wear just typical park clothes, especially. An incredible meal i'm going to try and insert like a little photo of the steak down below because because it was delicious i'm I, I can't wait to have it again um so if you're going for a special occasion we were there to celebrate um getting engaged and it was also my birthday so we were celebrating everything we had buttons galore um but if you're going for a celebration it's a really good place for a celebratory meal and they will look after you there and spoil you a little bit. It's delicious food, a gorgeous atmosphere, and you don't feel like you're in the Disney bubble when you're in the California Grill. It really does feel like you're in a fancy restaurant. So I can highly recommend that as a venue to go for a special occasion. I love it. Fantastic food, fantastic wine.
mainly and fantastic view of the fireworks so yeah ticks a lot of boxes it's very close to being number one but i'll tell you why number one is number one in a minute but yeah number two california grill the big number one our favorite one it is tepanido at epcot Tepan Edo is located in the Japan Pavilion of the World Showcase. And the reason it's made number one is because it's not just my favourite, it was Alfie's favourite as well. So collectively, this is our favourite place. We've only been once. We, we went for the first time in um, November. And we'd never been to a... I think it's called Habuchi. I might be getting this really wrong and I'm sorry if I am. It's, just, it's basically like Benihana, if you've been there, they're all around the world, so you may have known know a bit about them. So, essentially, the, um, the chefs are, you're at the chef's table, you sit around um, the hot, really, really hot plate, which they cook everything on in front of you, and it's basically like a dinner and a show. You get to see your chef um, prepare all of the vegetables, all of the food, um, chop all the meat and prawns and cook everything. And it's really, really fresh because they cook it there in front of you. And wow, what, like, what an experience. I was just not expecting it to be what it was. I'd heard good things and it was one that we definitely wanted to try. But Alfie's not a fan of noodles. He's not really a fan of spices. So I was a bit worried whether he was going to like it or not. So when he then said that it was his favourite place, I was really shocked. Um, but it, the food was just delicious. It is a one table service credit um, restaurant, if you're on the dining plan. And we... I'd say it was fairly reasonable as well. My... Um, our... I had the steak and the prawns and Alfie had the steak and the chicken like combination and it comes with rice um, lots of vegetables and also noodles I think both of ours were in the $30 region if you're paying out of pocket which is fairly reasonable for the whole dinner and show environment that this place is um, so when you arrive in the Japan Pavilion um, this restaurant is one of like one of two halves so half of it is Tokyo Dining and the other half is Tepanido the restaurant takes you into separate little rooms and each room has like four of these cooking tables in them and there's around i want to say eight to ten people sit around each table and um, so you will be sitting unless you're in a bigger group you will be sitting with people that you do not know however we found this experience great we were with a, fam a big family and then just us two around our table and they were all from new york and it was really interesting just to speak to other people and hear about their trip um because we don't of you don't often get to like speak so in depth with people and you're involved in the whole cooking process and um, so it's really great just to to have a meal and meet new people and we were lucky that we had a great family who were with us um but tepanido we'd never been before we'd never been to that type of restaurant before and we were really blown away um all of the chefs and the waitresses were really um, really great they explained everything on the menu um, they asked you if you wanted it spicy or not spicy how you wanted your steak cooked and they done everything perfect for everyone There's lots of different things on the menu they do tofu to tofu wow okay they do tofu as well if you are veggie slash vegan which is great and they are really good about um, cleaning the um, hot plates of it you don't have any sort of cross contamination or anything like that so they're really hot and allergies in there as well for that reason but they handle that really well um the desserts there um aren't as great to be honest we had the green tea ice cream which was amazing but there's not a huge dessert menu so if you're a dessert fan then it's maybe not the best place for you but um I, I think that's standard for that sort of restaurant they don't do like that cuisine like japanese like there's not really much they do dessert wise but the experience of watching the chef cook in front of us was just amazing he was great he was hilarious he was like making hidden mickeys in the onions and stuff like that and it was really interactive and we had the best time it was about an hour and a half that we were in there so obviously you're in there for a set amount of time for how long it takes to cook and then eat and everything like that but it was really great um i love the world showcase for in epcot for food there is some great places there to try different cuisines from around the world 
hopefully one day we'll have tried all of them but for now Tepanido remains my absolute favourite um, I would definitely want to go and try like Benihana's in London now because I just can't wait to try that sort of food again but we both came away from that restaurant and said that was the best place I've ever eaten in like that was amazing what an experience um, they really go hard on like the Disney magic in there it was really really good and I was just blown away by the whole thing so we both collectively said that that was our favourite and that is why this is number one. So if you've been to a, a hibachi restaurant before, I think, I'm, I think I'm saying this right, I don't know. If you've been to a hibachi restaurant before, um, you will know what it's like, you'll know what to expect. But Disney do add their own little magical touches. Um, like I say, hidden Mickeys, um, the server like created Nemo out of the carrots and stuff like that. So it really is great. Um, the chef is so talented, um, doing all different skills with like the salt and pepper, like juggling them. It was a real show, like it was a real show. Like we really, really did enjoy it and we'd never been to that style of restaurant before. So it was new to us. Um, but I can really highly recommend the Disney magic on that. A lot of people say, oh, you can go to like any hibachi restaurant like in the world. Why do you need to go to one while you're at Disney? But I do think they add their own special touch from on there. And I don't think I would enjoy that sort of place as much if I wasn't in Disney. And the atmosphere as a whole is great like everyone gets involved like you're clapping you're singing um you're all doing different things to like add to the experience of the meal so you really come away like feeling like you've had a, an amazing experience as well as just having a good a good meal so for me the atmosphere and everything there is just fantastic so if we were going to rate tepanido overall i would say value for money is about a good nine i think like for the like the good food and it's really well cooked um, and you can customise your flavours, your sauces and all of that yourself and it's good portion sizes. I would say that that's a good nine. But the actual, um, the food itself, the atmosphere and the service is all 10 out of 10 for me. Like you cannot rate it any higher. It is truly fantastic. So that is why this one is number one other than California Grill because even though California Grill is amazing, it is expensive for what it is and you are going to come away with a hefty bill if you've been there and i mean disney's expensive right so i suppose that you expect that for a signature restaurant however i think the whole point of this being a bit more affordable and still having the whole luxury feel um the great great food like the steak was incredible and um, the shrimps were beautiful everything was really fresh and um, there was a really varied menu and we had cocktails which were delicious but there was a good wine list and a good sake list or sake i don't know i'm really not very good at all of this but the list um there is meant to be really good I've, um and you really do feel like you've been immersed into japan so for me and for Alfie, this place was just top, top notch and we will 100% be returning if we go again. So if we do a quick recap, number five was sci-fi dining. It was um, the 60s feel drive through theatre style restaurant and that gets us at number five for being sort of basic-ish food, nothing too interesting on the menu but the experience of being at the drive through is what makes it on our list. Number four, Garden Grill. In my opinion, the best character meal I've been to because of its family-style dining um, and the experience of the rotating restaurant is fantastic. Getting to meet Mickey without having to queue is a big bonus for me. And again, delicious food, great service and um, quite good value for a character meal. Number three was uh, Yak and Yeti in Disney's Animal Kingdom, the Asian style restaurant with a really varied menu and brilliant if you like um, different cuisines and you have a bit more of an exotic taste buds. Um, this place is really great for that if you want to escape the typical chicken nuggets and chips and hot dogs and all of that that Disney has to offer. And Disney do really great but this place is great if you want something different and it's really good value so that's what gets that at number three. Number two, California Grill, which was a tight one because it could have been number one very easily, but a fantastic occasion fancy restaurant with an amazing view over at the Magic Kingdom and you get to see happily ever after without the crowds and 
the food is incredible the steak was the best steak i've probably ever had and the wine list is amazing so if you're a big foodie and you're a big wine lover then you're gonna love this place and it's nice to have an excuse to get dressed up a little bit fancy while you're on your disney holiday because you don't normally get to do that but number one for me and Alfie is definitely Tepanido. The whole experience is just incredible. Dinner and a show, really, and they do the show really, really good. What else would you expect from Disney? It, a lot of people say, oh, it's like any other hibachi restaurant. However, Disney do add its own magic to it, and you are going to love it. It's a bit of a long experience because you're there for a good hour and a half to two hours, depending on um, what you're having to eat. But it's worth it it's very reasonably priced um for the type of experience you're getting and the service is incredible you will not be disappointed if you eat there so guys have any of you eaten at these places before are they in your top five or did you not like them and if you are planning your trip are any of these restaurants on your to-do list please comment below and let me know what you think if you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you have any further questions um, about any of these restaurants, then please do comment below or you can inbox me on um, Instagram and I'll get back to you. And thank you so much for watching. If, please give this a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe so that you can see more content in the future. And I will be doing a top five quick service review vlog soon. So keep your eyes out for that. But in the meantime, thanks guys and um, I'll see you real soon.